On today's video, I am going to show you my entire Stephen King collection, but stay tuned because the last 10 movies are my top 10 Stephen King movies. Bolt your doors. Lock your windows. It's not the boogeyman. It's Side Hustle Cinema. Welcome back to the channel. Side Hustle Cinema here, and today I am doing my entire Stephen King collection. And the last 10 videos are going to be my top 10. Uh, it's going to be Stephen King's horror movies, though. I'm uh, I'm not putting uh, the three big ones that, you know, are non-horror. That's uh, Stand By Me, Shawshank Redemption, and The Green Mile. I am showing those off, but I didn't include them in the top 10. You know, because it's Halloween time, it's the spooky season, and I just wanted it to be the top 10 uh, horror movies from Stephen King. If you'd want to know, uh, all three of those movies would be in the top ten. Uh, this is my list, this is my opinion, and uh, there's going to be some surprises on here for sure. Uh, my number one isn't on anyone's Stephen King top ten list or top five. I haven't seen anyone even mention this movie. Uh, so you'll want to stay tuned and, and see what's my number one Stephen King horror movie. Uh, I think you'll be surprised. And if you like this type of video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and leave a comment about anything we talk about today. I would love to hear what your top 10 or top 5 Stephen King movies list is. Uh, these are always fun videos to do. I enjoyed uh, shooting this one. And so, uh, yeah, let's, let's get into it. I'm going to try to move through these kind of quickly so the video is not too long. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about my top 10 when I get to the last 10. So these first two movies that I'm going to show are kind of honorable mentions in a way. They're, they're not really uh, Stephen King movies. Uh, they're, they're sequels that I have. Um, but, you know, they weren't wrote uh, by Stephen King. They're not based on a book by Stephen King other than the original movies that, you know, they share a name with. And the first one is uh, Pet Cemetery 2. Great movie, it's just not really a Stephen King movie. Then we got Return to Salem's Lot. Again, this one just shares the title. It's not really a Stephen King story. It's not even a very good movie. And then the next few movies are movies that are amazing Stephen King movies, but they're not horror movies, so I didn't put them in the top ten list because of that. And the first one is Stand By Me. Masterpiece of a movie, though. Then we have Shawshank Redemption. Just got it on 4K. Another masterpiece. The Green Mile. Can't wait for it to come out on 4K. Another great one. The next couple movies are, are some uh, Stephen King series that I own. Um, the first one is Castle Rock. Uh, there is a season two of this that I still need to pick up. Uh, these are pretty good series. You should definitely check these out. The next one is The Outsider. It was an HBO series and uh, it's pretty good too. Starts strong, gets a little weak in the middle, but has a fantastic finish. Uh, you should definitely check this one out as well if you haven't seen it. I'm trying to cut down on my multi-packs and own all these movies individual if I can. But I still have a few multi-packs because it's the only way I have some of these movies. And the first one is a multi-pack with The Langoliers, The Stand, and The Golden Years. Now I have The Stand individual, and you'll see it later, but uh, Langoliers and The Golden Years are the ones I don't have from this set. Uh, the next one is a, is a six movie multi-set, and there's four titles that I don't own individually on this one. And that is App Pupil, Bag of Bones, The Dark Tower, and the secret window. The next multi-pack I have is uh, Big Driver and Riding the Bullet. Next we have The Stand. It's the original series. Uh, there is a new one that, that just came out. Uh, the new one's not very good. I thought I think the original was a little better than this new one. Although the new one is, you know, it's fresher, looks nice, but it just wasn't as good a movie. Next we have Cat's Eye. It's a Stephen King anthology movie. 
Next we have the Lawnmower Man. Whenever I have multiple copies, I'll put the other copies in here as well. Um, I have the old DVD snapper case and then the Scream Factory edition. Needful Things. This one was close to making my top 10. Really enjoy this one. 11 22 It's one of the Stephen King movies I own that I've never seen. Haven't seen this one. Rose Red. I think Stephen King's, you know, made for TV miniseries are some of the best movies that he has. And uh, this one is, is no exception. Great movie. Next we have The Dead Zone. Next we have 1408. Not one of my favorite movies, but I think John Cusack kind of saves it for me. Another TV miniseries, Desperation. Next we have Storm of the Century. This disc comes with six bonus movies, none of which are Stephen King movies, so I don't really care about those. Next we have Sleepwalkers. Uh, this is a very unique tale of werecats. This was a fun one. Next we have Dreamcatcher. A lot more people hate this one than I do. I actually kind of like this one quite a bit. Next we have The Dark Half. Children of the Corn is next. I just have the Blu-ray version. I know the 4K version just came out. But I think I'll be sticking with this Blu-ray version. It was pretty good. Silver Bullet is next. This one's in a lot of people's top 10. Didn't quite make mine, but I do love this uh, werewolf movie. Firestarter's next. If I had the power to set someone ablaze every time I got angry, <laughs> there'd be a lot of fires around. Misery is next, and uh, this one's getting a 4K soon. But this Scream Factory edition is pretty good, so I don't know if I'm going to be upgrading or not. It's in a lot of people's top 10s, but it didn't quite make mine. Next, we have the newer version of It, and I just lumped one and two together because, you know, it's basically one story. They only really split it apart, you know, so they could uh, tell a longer story and make some more money with a sequel. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one story. So I just lumped it together, and it's not in my top ten. Now we're finally in the top ten, and, and coming in at number ten, we have Carrie. And this one, for me, is, is it's really about the story. Uh, I have both the remake there and the original. And for me on this one, it's kind of dealer's choice. I like them both. I like them both almost equally. I mean, Sissy Spacek played you know, more of a plain Jane. She kind of fit the role a little bit better. I mean, Chloe Grace Moretz, you know, she looks so good. I mean, you know, it's hard to picture her as being like an outcast. But, you know, in all fairness, the whole cast of that movie was all like supermodels. It was all supermodel high school. So it kind of fit in a way. I like both movies because it's just a great story. You know, getting revenge on, on you know, bullies and people who pick on you and developing these supernatural powers I mean who wouldn't want that you know sounds pretty cool to me I, I, I like I love the story it's in my top 10 next we got the original it I could have lumped this one together you know like I did Carrie and put the the new one in here with the old one but with it I feel like you need to make a stand and pick like the old one or the new one I do like them both I want to say that uh, for different reasons but overall, I just enjoy the original one better, and I think it really comes down to the way the story's structured. I like that they sort of, you know, jump back and forth a little bit from adult to, to kid. Uh, you know, with them calling each of the people, and then they go back and show some of the story from them being kids. I just like the way that the story was structured. I, th I thought it made for a better movie. Maximum Overdrive is next, and I know this one's not on a lot of people's top ten. A lot of people don't like this one at all. They think it's way too goofy, but I, I enjoy it. I, I like the goofiness of it. it are, there's some definite, you know, you could poke holes in the movie logic in this one if you want to do that, you know, but I just enjoy it for what it is, you know. Amazing soundtrack. Everyone always gives praise to that, you know, all the ACDC songs that's on there. Uh, Emilio Estevez, how can you not like anything that he's in? 
for me, this is like one of those, it's one of my most rewatchable movies that I have. I mean, I, I watch this one every year. If I catch it on TV, I definitely sit there and watch it. So, yeah, I mean, it's got to be in my top ten. The next movie is Salem's Lot. And I do show off a triple pack in this one that has uh, the made-for-TV version of Stephen King's The Shining. That was the one that Stephen King directed. But this isn't about that movie. Uh, this is about Salem's Lot. And I like the original, but I gotta tell you, if you've never seen the remake, the one with Rob Lowe, that's really where this pick is. I'm picking the Rob Lowe remake for the countdown. Uh, as much as I like the original uh, and I'm a big fan of it, um, the remake is so much better. I mean, it, it really takes, it, it uses its time. It was a made-for-TV miniseries. It was just a two-nighter, but it uses its time to tell a lot more stories. Rob Lowe's fantastic in it. It's got a lot of pretty good actors in it. And not a lot of people even know about it. So do yourself a favor. Go check this one out. It, it is a, it's a great movie. Uh, if you like the original, you're going to love this one. Uh, highly recommend it. Next we got Christine. Christine's usually in everyone's top ten. It's a unique story. The killer car. It's just a good movie. Great Stephen King movie. Looks amazing on 4K by the way. If you've been watching my channel, you know I love some Animal Attacks movies, and uh, Cujo, that's really, that's really one of the best. What can I say, man? I mean, it's one of Stephen King's best movies, I think. It's in a lot of people's top five, top ten, for sure. And fun fact, I had a St. Bernard growing up. It was a girl at St. Bernard named Daisy. She didn't go crazy and kill the neighbors, but... Uh... Next we have Dr. Sleep. Uh, what a surprise this movie was when I first watched it. Uh, totally blown away. Uh, totally captivating story. Absolutely loved it. Uh, it is close to overtaking The Shining for me. I mean, it is very close. It's like The Shining and, and just right behind it is Dr. Sleep. I mean, they are that close for me. It is it's such an awesome movie and so rewatchable. I, I watch it. I've seen it so many times since it came out. Next we have The Shining. It was a good Stephen King story, but I think Stanley Kubrick and uh, Jack Nicholson is what really made The Shining what it was. I mean, that performance, the way that Kubrick told the story, um, so much better than that, that, um, that Stephen Weber, you know, Stephen King version that uh, was put out later on. Uh, this is The Shining everyone should watch. Number two, it is Pet Cemetery. Uh, love this one. Did not like the remake at all. Uh, for a lot of reasons, but I won't go into that. But uh, just, I love the characters in this. The story. Uh, so many things about it is great. This has really become, you know, I watch this one every single year. This is kind of my pumpkin carving movie. I'll put it on in the background when I'm carving some pumpkins. Uh, I used to actually enter a few contests with my pumpkins and stuff. I'm a pretty good pumpkin carver. So it always holds a special spot in my heart. And uh, I love watching this one usually more than once during the season. And my number one. And this goes to show you that everyone's list is always a little bit different. <laughs> Um, Graveyard Shift. That's my number one and you know a lot of people don't talk about this movie. It definitely doesn't make anyone's top ten or top five. I love this movie. Um, the tone, the feel of it, uh, the overall mood of the movie. Uh, even in the daytime you look at the the mill and you know something crazy is going on in there. I mean it just looks like like a spooky place to work. A horrible place to work. You know, all those rats, you know, you got the, the evil boss, Warwick, with that that strong main accent. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below, again, what is your top five? What is your top ten Stephen King horror movies? And until the next one, you guys have fun, stay safe, keep watching those movies, and I'll catch you on the next one.